wanted to speak about um, the Galilean wedding. And apparently it's totally different to all the other cities in Israel. They had their own sort of customs. And it correlates with the end times that we are living in now. So when the bridegroom wants to propose to his bride, he goes to the city gate. And all the elders are sitting at the gate. And everybody that sees him going there knows that he's going to propose to his bride. So he goes and the bride and the family are waiting there and um, he has a written proposal which he reads out to the bride and then he pours a cup of wine for her to drink. So at this stage she can either say no or she can accept. But she does accept and she takes the cup of wine and by taking the cup of wine she signifies that she wants to marry the groom so she drinks the cup of wine and then he also partakes of the cup of wine and then he says to her now you are mine so actually they have entered into a covenant of marriage now but um, they still are not going to be together yet um, the father he's got to go back to his father but also while he is there, he also gives her a dowry. He gives her enough money for her to prepare herself for the wedding. And also in case something happens to him, um, that she will be okay for the rest of her life. So it's quite a big gift that he gives to her. So then um, they have to depart now and go their separate ways. They don't come together until such time as the father decides. So um, I would just like to also say that in Matthew um, 26 verse 27, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to his, his disciples saying, drink from it all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's house. Jesus is our bridegroom. Yeah. So we go back then to the bride and the groom. They are now joined in the covenant of marriage. So the bridegroom must go back to his Father's house. And what he does is he builds a place for his bride onto his Father's house. He doesn't build a separate house, but it's joined to his father's house. And that is going to be their future home. So the bridegroom is Jesus, and he says, he left the world and he said, in John 14, 1, Let not your heart be troubled, because you believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the bridegroom and the bride, they don't know when the wedding feast is going to take place. <coughs> it's actually the bridegroom's father's decision. So Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse 26, But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the Son of Man or the angels of heaven, but my Father only. The bride, she must start preparing herself for the wedding. And usually it takes time because they, those days they didn't have the material available. They had to wait for traders from the east to come to get enough material to prepare a wedding dress for herself and the bridesmaids. And she must also prepare herself spiritually because she's leaving her family and um, she's going into a new life. So we too, we are his bride and we are not fit to be the bride of Christ because of anything we have done 
Yeah. We are marriage material purely because of what the Lord has done. Yeah. So this place that we're living in, we are leaving. It is not our home. And Jesus gave the example also of the ten virgins. They took oil. There were five wise and five foolish. And the five wise took oil with their lamps, and the foolish didn't take um, enough oil. So when the bridegroom came, the five foolish ones didn't have enough oil to go in because their lamps had gone out. And the Holy Spirit is also a symbol of oil. Yeah. So um, we must have the Holy Spirit with us. So when the bridegroom came, they all the five wise went in with him, and the door was closed. And the five foolish ones came later, and they couldn't get in. And they said, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. That is in Matthew 25. Watch therefore, for you do not know the hour or the day in which the Son of Man is coming. So we go back again to the wedding. And the Father, he's inspected all the bridegroom's preparations. And one night he decides it's time. So he goes and he wakes up the bridegroom. And he gets up joyfully and he takes the shofar and he blows the trumpet wherever he goes. And everybody hears and they those that are away, they will go with him. They're going now in procession to the bride's house. The bride also knows that he's coming because she hears and she's standing ready for him. So when they get to the house, the bride, grew, the bride is lifted up on a chair and she's taken in procession back to the groom's father's house. And they then start the wedding celebration and everybody in, um, everybody that's the, there will go in and the doors are shut and the wedding feast begins. Usually it lasts for seven days. And once the door is closed, the door is closed. So there will be many that are left outside um, in 1 Thessalonians 4.10 For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of God, the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. And then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up. So the bride was lifted up, and we are caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. So the meaning of the bridegroom is that one who, in Hebrew, it means one who joins himself. And if we are married to him, then we must also become one with him. Yeah. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 17. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And Ephesians 5, for we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. When the bride says yes to the bridegroom, when she becomes his and he becomes hers, so that all that is ours, our burdens, our weaknesses, our sins become his, and all that is his, his salvation and his blessings become ours. Yeah, well, wow. amen. Mm -hmm.